Hello and welcome to Second Sunday. This is my live monthly broadcast that I do every month. It kind of gives you the 411 on your energy update. And we just happen to be in December, which is our last month of the year. So we have a lot to talk about today. Um, if you're just seeing me for the very first time, my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I like to call myself an alchemist, one who has literally turned darkness into light, and now I get to go all over the world helping other people do exactly that in my online academy, on my website, all over Facebook, YouTube. You're going to find me if you Google my name. So anyways, here I am to present this amazing year-end conclusion of kind of a, bring you a little bit of clarity on what has been happening all year and where it has kind of come to a head and how that can inspire you to really make sense of what you've been going through this year. Everything you've been going through has been growing you. See, a lot of people thought that this year was gonna be like the year that they built their dreams. And I think that if you're kind of holding onto that viewpoint, you're probably in judgment and you're probably a little bit disappointed in yourself. And we need to let that go because that's not what this year was about at all. This is a three year. This is a year that is really designed for you to bring the pieces of yourself back together. This is a self reckoning year. This is the year of self realization. This is the year where we actually learn how to say no thank you. We remember our inner child. We begin to work intuitively with our ego components and we begin to navigate the human body with our higher selves. This is not an easy undertaking for any of us at any stage of this game whether you're all the way in enlightenment or you're just waking up you're finding yourself kind of at ground zero this year and your ground zero is the most important place for you to be right now because this is where we build everything on top everything that's been you know, coming into your vision this year, your self-realization, your acts of standing up for yourself, you're practicing speaking your truth, you're navigating forward motion when it comes to your heart's desires, you're letting go of old commitments and obligations, you're, you're understanding your needs and wants, you're understanding your traumas, you're healing yourself. This is what this year has been about. So if you have taken any part of what I just said, your year has been beyond stellar for you because it is the foundation. We have to, before we create, create anything new, whatever is standing on top, there has to be demo. That is what this year has been about. It has been a demolition year. It has been a year of healing. It has been a year of reminding you of who you were through some heartbreaks, some challenges, some divorces, some breaking up of partnerships, some moving away from old jobs, you know, enlightenment isn't about creating the utopia on top of all the crap. It isn't about building on top of anything. It is about clearing the land and clearing the space so that whatever you do grow in that land, in that ground within you is going to be more pure for your needs and wants. The things that are going to grow out of you this year are not a combination of what everybody's wanted from you your whole life. It is going to be about you. It is going to be the conclusion of you. This is your fresh start in your new world, in your new reality. And because 2020 is the year of vision, it is a practice year. We're moving kind of out of this Jupiter year of energy, which is all about kind of creative motion and, and putting pieces in alignment. And we're moving into kind of a Capricorn stage. And if you guys know about Capricorn energy, which I don't know a lot of, but what I do know about the Capricorn, it's very about a practical application. So now what we're going to be doing for this next year is we're going to be putting everything that we've become and everything that we've eliminated into place and begin to practice that becoming of ourselves. Practice the unification of the me, myself, and I. Working with the focused component of the ego identity, which is designed to keep you moving in that forward motion. It is your divine purpose that is why we have obsession. It's good for us to be obsessed about purpose. It's good for us to be obsessed about love. It's good for us to be obsessed about what we are focused on. And that is what we're gonna be using for the ego for in the coming years. Inner child is where all of your magic is, is the bridge. It is the one that can walk between the human reality and non-physical reality. It is the only part of you that stays completely immortal and mortal at the same time. So it can cross the thresholds of all dimensions in time and space 
to bring you clarity of this non-judgmental understanding of what love actually is. Okay, so this is the importance of the inner child. That's why you've been going through so much inner child work this year. So you can get to know her. You can get to know him. You can understand the traumas that you have had inside of your body that have been holding you back. You can look at your heartbreaks differently now. You can see that what they've been designed to do was remind you that you are unbreakable, that the love that you have for yourself was nurtured every time someone broke your heart. Every time someone said no to you, you said yes to you. Every time someone pulled the plug on a plan, you stepped forward and created something bigger and stronger for yourself. This is how self-love is birthed within us. And this is the most important thing that we could have gone through all year. So when we look at ourselves as if we're taking score, we're probably going to be disappointed at this year. You know, you probably didn't manifest all of your hopes and dreams right in your hand yet. But what you did do is you let go of everyone else's dreams. You let go of what mommy and daddy wanted for you. You've let go of this idea that you have to climb this corporate ladder and be something that you're not anymore. The things that are near and dear to your heart are going to be the engine that is going to drive your purpose in the coming years, your children, your family, your health, your vitality, your purpose, your love, your inner child, your abundance that is made through your freedom of your time and space. And this is going to be the most important, crucial building elements that we're going to be using this year to build this new foundation of self-love. For the first time in human history, 2020 is going to be the beginning of self-love, which means everything that we grow on top of this now is a byproduct of who we truly are. No more false facades. No more BS, no more, you know, status quo, no more rules and regulations. This is where the patriot becomes the true anarchist and begins to build a civilization and a world based in self-love, which is the only factor that can ever create unity. Without self-love, unity doesn't exist because if I don't have me, then I need you. And if you let me down, then we're going to have some odds. We're going to be in battle together. And if I didn't realize that I wasn't supposed to let myself down first, then I'm sure as hell going to not understand that it's your job to let, not let me down. So if I don't let me down, you can't let me down. If I hold myself up and I hold myself accountable to my hopes, my dreams, my responsibility of my frequency and my vibration, then what you do only benefits me as a lesson or an inspiration. There is no more hurting each other in this phase. This is amazing times that we're in and not to mention that as we kind of go into this new moon energy on the 12th which is Gemini it is all about holding the two sides of duality in your hand and being able to multitask in who we have become and who we are not yet so it's looking at who we've become taking true stock and gratitude of everything that we've been strong enough to let go of this year and to in the other hand hold this idea of the Gemini energy of pure positive potential, of anything is possible. All of this weight that we have let go and our new understanding of love and our new understanding of harmony can really create new worlds for all of us. And to like just have icing on this cake right now, we are gonna have this kind of solar eclipse that's gonna come in and it's not a whole eclipse, it's kind of a partial eclipse, but for me what that means when I look at it from like a quantum perspective, it is the symbology, symbolic idea or the mythology or metaphor of the stained glass element. And you know, whenever you go into a church, you always see this, this beautiful stained glass, but I don't know if you really understand the metaphor of why stained glass is in the church. The reason why, is because the light is illuminated from the inside and it is the only way you can see the beauty of the glass itself is to be lit by the inside. And that's what this whole next year is gonna be about you demonstrating yourself as stained glass. No more about what you have on the outside of you that impresses the world, but who you are on the inside. And we understand that what makes us beautiful and magnificent and unbreakable on the inside is not perfection. It is the imperfections. It's the battles that we have survived. It is the heartbreaks that we've overcome. It is the poverty and the lack that we have risen above 
from. It is the idea that when we call on to a higher power, we call on the universe, we're actually beginning to believe that we deserve and are worthy enough to receive the help that shows up through people, places, and things. We are beginning to see the evidence of that. We are being able to see cultural changes this year, new politics arising, new understandings of money and the, the principle of economy. These whole views will change when the individual can take personal responsibility for their own vibration. This is a very important year that we are embarking upon. So your homework for this year, this is gonna be a really short second Sunday because I really have summed it completely up. Your homework for this year moving forward is first and foremost, before you close out this year, let all judgment of self go of what you have not yet created. If you have not created it yet, you weren't supposed to. You were waiting for the energy to line up on the planet so you could step in, okay? You have been leaning in, and now when you feel that inspired action, you'll know when it's time to step in. You'll know who it's time to step in with. The people, places, and things that you have been wanting will answer your call and step towards you. It's no longer a ghost chase. It's more about me leaning in, me saying yes to myself, me being accountable to my own self-love. Therefore, I don't actually need you, which means if you understand frequency and vibration, that is only when I can have you. I can have you when I don't need you. I can have abundance when I don't need it. We can have peace when we are peace. So your first and foremost, the rest of the year homework is about taking stock of everything that you have become this year, everything that you've been able to let go of, all of your heartbreak that you have turned into a very important lesson for yourself. You're no longer in judgment of your shortcomings and your insecurities. You're showing your insecurities as a sign of strength. You're wearing your scars like badges of honor and saying, this is what I have lived through and your pain becomes your testimony. Your very existence on the planet becomes your identity versus what you've accomplished and where you went to school and how much money you have in the bank. The new idea of humanity will arise through the survived scars, the battleground that we have all risen. You know, we grow the best through ash and we understand that we have to have those burning years. And as we step into a year that is number four in numerology, we understand that number four is the year of abundance. It is when all four corners have, there's four legs to stand on. That table can be held up really strong and we can all sit together at that table and we can commune. So this is where we are. So your second bit of homework for this coming understanding is that when you feel less than, when you feel you don't have enough, remember that all you have to do is turn on the light from the inside and let your stained glass shine because that is the magic that other people are going to be looking for this year. That is the inspiration and the collective purpose of, un of understanding of where we're all heading is that the light shines from the inside. So stop looking for it from the outside, looking for it in your partner, in your bank account, in your job. Just remember to stop, take a deep breath. And it's like a little love note for your body to take a deep breath and just remember who you are and set an intention to turn the light on and step forward and shine. Whatever it is that is inside of you will motivate and inspire others and show them where to turn their light on as well. Your last bit of homework for this year is I would really love to see all of you really sit in with yourselves and set clear intentions of a vision that you would like to create for 2020. Not what you want the world to do, not what you want politics to do, not what you want our government to do, but what are you going to do with who you have become? What is it that you want to create? What do you want to do with your time this year, your money this year, your health, 
your relationships. How do you want to go deeper in those relationships? How do you want to go more, um, more creative with the understanding of economics? How do you want to nurture and milk your time more to point it towards the center of your destiny versus that instant gratification or that avoidance or that addiction cycle that we've been in for thousands of years? And what is it that you want to set forth for yourself to achieve based in who you've become? So letting go of all the judgment of this year, of what we did not accomplish, of what we lost. You know, failure doesn't exist in this universe, only experience, only learning. And from every loss comes abundance because when there is empty space, the universe wants to fill it with particles of nothing but potential. So every time you remove something solid that was not the right fit for you, even though you loved it, even though it made you safe and comfortable, when it was not the right fit for you, what you're doing is you're making space for the universe to abound inside of that space and put empty, ultimate, unlimited possibilities for you to build whatever it is you want from the vision of your heart. This is the year where the me, myself, and I, the heart coherence, the mind coherence, the gut coherence begin to speak together in unified structures, which means it's going to become a symphony that's going to come out of your body. It's going to become this radiating light that you've had in your gut this whole time that you weren't able to share or speak or know how to deliver. Things will become clear when you stop the judgment of what you do not have. When you look at what you do have and you hold it in a state of gratitude, you literally are the frequency of the universe and therefore you can create anything on top of that table. So this is my message for second Sunday. Very short, very sweet, hopefully precise. Hopefully you got a little nugget. Hopefully it brought you clarity and understanding of where we are and the potential that lies ahead of you. Your life is what you choose it to be. You are still creating your own reality. You can ch still choose to suffer. You can still choose to judge. You can still choose to blame and shame yourself and others, but I will tell you, it's not very much fun. And there's not going to be a lot of people who are going to want to play with you anymore. There's not going to be a lot of people who are going to want to run in that direction anymore. So it is in your best interest to let it all go. Let it go. Move into divine understanding of the birth of the new universe. It's represented in the Christ consciousness and step into who you have become from what has basically burned away. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You can find me all over YouTube if you use my name. You can find me in my Facebook groups. You can find me in my academy. And um, our new website drops on the 12th of December. It's going to be completely interactive. It's going to be mo my, it's going to be mind blowing and it's going to be exciting. And I do want to announce that. We will, the Quantum Revolution Tour will be in Europe at the end of January. We are doing an event in Ireland, details coming on the website and in our social media groups on Instagram and Facebook, probably at the end of this week. We'll be in Ireland on the 23rd doing a live meet and greet and a live question and answer there. So if you are anywhere near Ireland, come see me. And also, we are going to be in London um, the following days, and that exact date of when we're going to be doing that next uh, kind of workshop is still undetermined. We're putting those dates together right now. But if you are anywhere near Ireland or London and you want to come see us, we will be putting all of that information online very soon for you to come and hang out with us and really celebrate this new year of vision. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you all in the classroom.